Hi everyone, today I'm going to be doing a review of Kato Emilia's Loveland album. So this is the first album I purchased by Emilia and I sampled quite a few of the tracks on Tumblr before I decided to buy it. If you've heard some of the singles off this album, I recommend checking out some of the album tracks if you can because I think they're actually stronger than the singles. I really enjoy this album art. It's kind of expressive and kind of dark. I think it fits the album fairly well. So let's get into the track by track review. The album opens with Lonely Hearts and Melia starts off with a very nice gentle vocal solo over some piano. I really like this song as an album opener because I feel like it's setting the entire mood for the album. It's very heavily R&B influenced. It's really giving you a solid idea of the themes in this album, which is like heartbreak and also falling in love, as well as musically it will give you an idea of the style of the vast majority of the songs on this album. Track two is Shape of Love and it's somewhat similar to the first song as it is a very powerful R&B style ballad. It has a much stronger note of urgency, especially with that piano in it and it comes through a lot in Melia's voice and I feel like Melia, if I could complain about one thing about her is that she doesn't do a lot of vocal acrobatics, particularly on this album, but her voice itself is very strong and I find the actual tone of her voice very appealing. The next song is Love Affection and it's a more, more fast paced song compared to the first two. They still come Kind of feel like they all fit together as a set though so they actually almost like run into each other they don't really stand apart very much which i'm okay with but that means i also kind of enjoy the song the first three songs sort of on an even keel and none of the three are kind of standing out to me in any way the next song is unique and it's a powerful, uh, almost like party song. I really, really enjoy this song, but I have to say Amelia is guilty of using a little bit of weird English in her music. Although her pronunciation is very good, oftentimes the English phrases that she uses don't really make too much sense. And there is a repeated phrase in the song that was repeated so many times. And the first time I listened to it, I had no idea what they were even saying. So they're saying unique is diamond in the rough, but I had to consult the lyric book to find that out. The next song is Kamisama, which means God. I really love the melody in this song. It is kind of like a very deeply emotional piano ballad, and I really love the sweeping choruses. That being said, it's middle of the road for me on this album. It's not among my favorites or my least favorites. The one is probably the most R&B flavored song in this album. I really love her words at the beginning in English. She says, baby, please don't care about me. I don't know why, but it just, she sounds so cool when she says that. The chorus for the song reminds me a little bit of 90s music, but not in a bad way. I really like 90s music. Again, I really like this song, but it's not among my favorites. The next song is Emotion, and Emotion is kind of breaking the strong R&B themes that we had going so far in the album with a EDM song. And I like the song pretty well. I think this was the first song I heard off this album and I wasn't super impressed with it. As you may know that I don't really like EDM that much at all, but this song doesn't approach the annoying noises that I find a lot in EDM and it sounds a little like early 2000s-ish, so I like that tone. The next song is Lover Episode 2 and this was the first song that really really made Milia Kato catch my eye, particularly the first version that she did with M-Flow. Just everything about this song is so perfect especially the version on this album because Verbal is not in this song. When Verbal's verse was removed, Melia added her own new verse to it and I just think the song is perfect. The song is again a very melancholy piano like heartbreak song but it's so fun to sing along with. It's not too difficult, the Japanese is fairly easy and there's lots of English in it as well. I really love this song but for now I have to say it's probably my second favorite on the album. The next song is Pride and we're heading back into the piano based heavy R&B theme in this album with a really nice sweeping chorus. This song isn't quite powerful enough to stand out amongst the other R&B tracks on this album. It doesn't pack enough of an emotional punch, so it's really kind of flying under the radar when I listen to this album. The next song is Beautiful and it starts off with this really annoying bass sound, <laughs> or I should say like a bass and drum beat, but thankfully after a few seconds it cuts out and the song completely changes. Once we get past the first verse, this song really has a classic 90s pop feeling and I really love it. If you like 90s pop, definitely check it out. That being said, it's not like an upbeat pop song when I say that. It is, I don't know the tone of it. Maybe Amelia's trying to be a little more seductive or poetic with it. The 
next song is Run Free featuring I and Verbal. The song was used as a promo for Adidas, if I remember correctly. And unfortunately, I cannot stand the song. This is one of those songs that is an annoying EDM. As usual, I don't really care for Verbal's verse in this. I would like to see I and Kato Amelia collaborate again in the future, though. But yeah, it's hard for me to even get through this song. I'm like cringing as I'm reviewing it right now. The next song is One Night Only, and this is such a classic 90s R&B song. It really reminds me of Utari Karu's sound on the first Love album. The tone of the song is a little more carefree, Amelia's being a little sexier, flirtier. The next song is They Say To Jonetsu No Aida. I had a hard time finding English translations for this song. The title um, I found translates between the calm and lust, I think. If anyone knows better, please feel free to correct me in the comments down below. But this is my favorite song on the album. It is so dramatic and I feel like Melia pulls that off so well, probably better than most artists could. And it really stands out on this album because it has a very classical sound with violins and piano. There's no real R&B influence or EDM or anything like that. There's this beautiful orchestra during the choruses. Later in the song, Melia says in English, I love you like the ocean loves silence. I thought that was so beautiful and like it, it really added to the whole tone of the song and it made me picture waves crashing against rocks, especially during the cascading drums of the choruses. And I don't believe this was a single and I was really, really surprised by this one track and I really recommend checking it out if you can. The last song of the album is the title track, Loveland. And unfortunately, it ends on kind of a down note for me. Loveland is a very, very traditional slow ballad. Very unmemorable to me. Although a good point I can make about this song is that Mia is doing the most sort of vocal styling in the bridge of the song. She's really showing off her range and her belting power. So overall this album um, is very, very concise. It is a 14 track album and minus a few misses for me. The rest of the songs were very, very well done and I would almost call this like an easy listening album other than they say because the songs are so concise with their theme as well as the R&B feel if you skip over a couple of the random EDM songs that are in there. But yeah, I like the song for sitting down just working at my computer and listening to it casually. It's not something that really like moves me to tears but also I found it a really good album and I do highly recommend it. So yeah, my favorite songs, like I said, are Leise to Jonetsu no Aida and Lover Episode 2. And my least favorite is Run Free featuring I and Verbal. So I think that was everything about the album. Please let me know what you guys thought of this album down below or if you can recommend any other work by Kato Milia to me. I also have her latest album, Liberty, which I will be reviewing sometime in the near future. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Hey everyone, this is just a quick update video to let you know that the In The Flesh tour is now available in North American iTunes stores. So that's in the USA, Canada, and Mexico. And Utada's tweet about it was pretty funny. So it's been six years since the actual tour took place and two and a half years since it came out in Japan.